Hi guys, it's uh, Sam for Digital Meat, um, and today we're going to be looking at the backlight shader. Um, basically what it does, it's a uh, cheap way of doing subsurface scattering on very thin objects. So, if I'm sure we all know what subsurface scattering is. As you can see, that um, light enters under the surface, bounces around, scatters light, and then when it comes out, it transmits this uh, sort of luminant quality. Um, now, on thin objects, like these leaves, which is basically what the backlight shader does, it's a cheap way of doing this on very thin objects. So you'll notice that um, some of these leaves have shadows being cast on them from the back side, but you can see them from the front. And that's pretty much what the backlight shader does. So we're just going to set up a quick small scene to um, to demonstrate this. And uh, so let's get started. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a room with a very thin curtain in it. And uh, we're going to have objects behind that curtain casting light onto onto the curtain itself. So let's start by building a quick room. Okay, we'll start off with a cube. We'll make it, uh, I don't know, 15 meters. That's maybe too big. Say 10 meters by 10 meters. Ooh. 10 meters even. You'll notice that I'm actually um, typing meters into the object properties for the size here. So for the height, um, we probably want it something like maybe three three meters. So I'm typing three meters and cinema is automatically converting that to centimeters. So that's a, that's a nice little function there of cinema. So that'll be about the size of our room. So let's just call this object room. Um, now I'm going to use another box to cut out a window. I wouldn't typically model like this but because our shapes are really simple um, it's not going to matter much. Uh, in fact, let's get this out of the way first. Let's click our room, convert it into an editable object. You can click this icon up here, or you can hit C on your keyboard. You'll notice that the icon's changed here for it. Um, we'll select polygons. Select all of our polygons by pressing Control A. Now, if I right-click and go down to Extrude, I can actually extrude this out. Um, what you may notice when you do this, this value here, this maximum angle, should probably read something like 89 degrees. And you can see that um, if I undo the extrude, when you extrude out, uh, the corners don't actually attach. Um, so you just want to whack this up to maybe 90, if that's not enough, 91, and that should snap the corners together. Okay, and we also want to make sure that we've got uh, create caps on. Now, we'll get this cube, our second one. This is what we're going to create our window with. So we want it to intersect our room. Um, and then we want to resize this so it's wider. Possibly taller as well. I'd say even taller than that. Just so we've got a full height window in there, let a lot of light in. Okay, that's great. Now, we're going to use this as a cookie cutter to cut out of the bigger box using a Boolean object. So we select the ball there, and then we drop both of these objects in, like so. So you notice the room's first on the list and the cube second, and that it needs to be that way because in the ball object you'll see it's A subtract B. Um, so the other options in the ball object, we want a high quality mesh and we want to create a single object. So when you uh, when you click that button, when I press uh, C to make this ball editable, I don't get any caps or anything like that. It creates just one object. Um, you can see that this isn't actually sitting on zero because we can see the grid in the middle of the room. So I'm just going to go to a different view. You can do this by clicking uh, your mouse button in. It brings you to this four view. So you've got your top view, front and right. Um, so 
if you go over one of these and then middle click the mouse again it'll open that that view up wide so we go back to object mode go back to move just sit that round about zero so that's now on the ground plane okay let's create a material just by double clicking this area double click the material itself and we'll call this walls um, we don't need any reflectance for the purposes of this tutorial we don't really need to do anything too fancy it's just to show off the backlight shader really so I've whoop, you notice that I've actually uh, I'm not making the walls white because nothing is actually white in reality so I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit maybe you can add a little bit of color into the walls if you wanted to slide it this way just so it's off just so it's off white and we'll apply that to this object um, now if we go into poly mode and select the floor so that polygons highlighted now I've got a wood material that I got from the content browser which you can get to by clicking on window going down content browser and if you click that there'll be lots of assets that uh, come bundled with Cinema 4D including objects and materials and that's where I got my wood texture from so now this polygon selected I can grab this and pull it onto it and it'll only be applied to that polygon and as you'll see up here uh, our materials are layered on top of each other and this tag signifies um, the selection the polygon selection we made which this material is applied to so go back to object mode you'll notice that the uh, the floor it looks too big that pattern so if we click on this and then go down to tiling we can actually tile that maybe uh, five times in each direction maybe a bit too much maybe I'm not sure it's not the prettiest but for this it will um, serve its purpose um, so if we just render that out yeah that's fine uh, getting some weird geometry going on at the top of this I'm not quite sure why uh, it's probably the way we booleaned out our scene but again that's not too much of a problem right so we've got a room set up so we'll rename this room uh, and we'll hide this now what I'm going to do is go into my top view and uh, go into the spline menu and click linear I'm just going to make two points here and uh, go to our selection tool We'll go to the Z and make sure that's on zero and make sure this point's on zero also uh, so then we've got a straight line then uh, select both of these points right click go down to subdivide and we'll sub subdivide this by 10 that's a that's a fine value and then we'll choose every other point on this spline and then push these up like so and select everything go back to object mode that's fine and then we'll drag this up a little bit actually we don't need to do that at all we can uh, now drop this spline in a extrude so if we go up to this menu up here hold down go to extrude and let go and then make this spline a child of the extrude we can see that something's happened we're not quite sure what though if we click on extrude and go to the object tab we can see that it's actually extruding it in the z direction and um, each one of these fields is x y z so we don't want it in the z direction you, if we look at the viewport we can see that this is the z tells you down here this is the x and this is the y so let's zero out the z direction and then add to the y direction which is the direction we actually want so uh, let's turn the room back on and we can see what's actually going on uh, obviously this is way too big but uh, if we click our extrude and then bring this up so it's not intersecting the floor um, 
select the extrude scale we'll scale this down just so it's a little bit more workable bring it near the window what I'm actually going to do is move this extrude up uh, click on extrude and we're actually going to go into minus figures so this is at the, the top now so then we can place this near the top of the room which is fine extrude this down I think that I still want to make this slightly smaller so we'll go to the scale and scale it down a little bit more yeah that's fine make sure this goes all the way down now I'm actually going to have it go through the floor because I want the curtain to drape on the floor eventually so you'll see why I'm doing this in a minute we can see that it's actually going through the floor there but that's no worry so we can do that now we're actually going to make this a cloth object in a minute and uh, for the cloth object to work it needs to work with geometry actual geometry not this uh, extrude generator um, so uh, we're going to convert it but we need some subdivisions so we're going to subdivide this by clicking on extrude going to our subdivision in the object tab and ramping this up so it's got enough information to to work with and then what we're going to do is we're going to click on extrude and make it editable by hitting the c key i'm going to rename this to curtain um, and now when we start simulating if uh, the curtain is already through the floor that's going to cause major problems for us so what i'm going to do as a temporary measure is um stick a bend make that a child of the curtain um, and if we put up this strength we can see that the bends actually not doing what we want it to do dear mate we get into view in fact i'm going to turn this room off for a moment so we can work easier you can see the bend isn't actually where the uh pardon me we can actually see that the bend deformer isn't where the object is if we click on the bend and go down here we see fit to parent that will fit it to the parent and now when we bend it'll be more accurate but it's still not doing you know it's not the same way we wanted so what we need to do is grab the bend actually flip it upside down by 180 degrees and now when we bend yes it's bending like this but we want it to bend into the room so we can actually change the angle so if we make this something extreme like 70 and then we can see where this angle is going by affecting this so uh, i actually want minus 90 degrees and that should give us a bend into the room i could just type minus 90 instead of faffing around there we go and if we turn the room back on actually get in there uh, you can see that uh, that's clearing the floor now uh, also I think that when we run the cloth um, it's actually going to be quite stiff this object so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a curtain uh, let's see yep choose the curtain I'm going to right click on it and go down to current state to object this creates this new object with the bend included in it we can get rid of the old one so this new one i'm going to select polygon mode Control a to select all of its polygons right click go down to subdivide and we're going to subdivide it so it's got a little bit more uh, polygonal information and there we go we can go back to our regular view now for the cloth we select our curtain right click on it and go down to simulation tags go down to the cloth tag and select that this tag is added it's the cloth tag uh, for now we're interested in the dresser tab so we're already on that and what uh, well I'll just show you the the cloth tag is on it if I hit play it just falls and it falls through the floor as well so we don't want it to fall through the floor or the room so if we select the room right click go down to uh, simulation tags again 
and then choose the cloth, uh, cloth collider that will make the room a cloth collider so now when we hit play it actually falls onto the floor you know some bunching up here that's because we haven't got self collisions turned on but I doubt we're going to need that because we're actually going to hang our curtain okay so oh by the way if you ever want to undo a uh, uh, a move uh, view move say like you do something like this you can press Control shift z and uh, it'll actually undo your camera move so if i move over here i can Control shift z and it'll put it back to the last known position of my view so that's always handy to know anyway back to this so if we select our curtain right we want to hang our curtain now so if we select our curtain and then go into point mode go to our live selection tool and we want to select this top row of points. I just want to make sure that I've got all of them. I think we've missed one there. And we've missed a couple there. There we go. Okay. So that's fine. We've got all our points now. And then we choose our cloth tag. Dresser tab. And then we've got this fixed point. So if we set that, you'll notice all the points that we selected have gone pink. Meaning that they're active now as set points. So go back into object mode we can see that uh, when we press play the curtains hanging now, I think there's a little bit too much friction between the floor and the curtain because this is going to be something thin like a neck curtain something like that so uh, if we go into the cloth tab go into tag we can see that the frictions at 70% so if we lower this say so something like 35 and also if we go up to the room and click on the cloth collider tag that also has a friction value that's actually pretty low so we'll leave that as that at the moment hit play and see if that's made a difference it's moving a little bit more naturally I wouldn't mind a little bit more so let's bring that friction for the cloth down to say 15% and maybe this down to 15% as well that's a little bit better. I'm tempted to make more subdivisions for my curtain just so it moves a little bit more naturally. So let's try this. Um, subdivide. One subdivision. There we go. A lot more. Now, you'll notice when I press play now, it falls to the floor. Uh oh, what's going on? And that's because we changed the number of the po of points in the object. So the point selection that we made before was no longer valid. So it automatically got deleted. So we need to go to curtain, go to our points. We can see that because it's been subdivided, those other points no longer exist. So, well, more points exist, if anything. Go back to our cloth tag, go back to our dresser, fix points, and we have more, more points now. So I'm just wondering if that's a little bit more natural. It is, but it's very slow. Okay. I'm going to undo that subdivision, I think. I'm going to keep that mistake in there it's always good to see someone else balls in shit up um, that'll do for now and to make it look a little bit prettier we can choose a subdivision surface put the curtain inside of that and then it'll look like it's smoothed out a lot um, yeah that looks okay and the reason uh, it's not running as slow as it was when I actually subdivided the curtain is, is because all the simulation the cloth simulation is actually being done on this curtain object um, the fact that the curtain's in a subdivision surface and it's subdivided it, uh, none of the calculations are actually being done on this higher poly version. It's all being done on the lower poly curtain, so that's just something to bear in mind. Right, now for the shader, backlight shader. Double click to make a new material. Um, we don't need the reflectance. 
the backlight shader lives in the luminance channel. So if we activate the luminance, we can see that's luminescent now. Um, we can drag that onto our curtain. In fact, we will call this curtain. And now if we click this little arrow next to the texture, go all the way down to effects, into backlight. We've now got our backlight shader in our luminance channel. If we go in there, you'll see this shape. This governs how it works. Uh, illumination is at 80%. So basically what that's saying is light comes in through the window, hits the curtain. How much, how much of that light are you going to see the other side of the curtain? Now, obviously, it's going to soak up some energy, so it won't be 100%. It never would be. So 80% is a good value. Uh, the shadow intensity, that is basically saying from the back side of this curtain, if there's anything in between the light and the curtain, how much of the shadow intensity is actually going to come through the curtain to the back side of it? This is at 60. That'll be fine for now. If we need to tweak it later, we can. Um, so I'm just going to close this. Okay, that'll do nicely for what we need at the moment. In fact, also what I want to do is, uh, you'll notice that if we go back to zero, the, the curtain's in this weird position. Uh, it looks just looks strange, and then obviously when we play, it sorts itself out. Now, I want its starting position to be something like this. So if we play along till it is in this state, and then click on the, cur uh, the cloth tag that's on the curtain, go to the dresser tab, and then we have this set in here called initial state. If we set that and then go back to zero, you'll see that its state has remained like this, which is better for us. That's fine. Okay, moving on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up some bars so we've got some shadows falling onto the curtain, then we can see that the curtain is actually transmitting it through the material. So, uh, what have I done? I've created a cube. I don't want to do that. I want to create a cylinder. I'm going to drag our cylinder out here and up here. Now you'll see that it's actually got 36 rotational segments on it. That's far too many for what we need it for. So I'm going to drop that down to 12. And then we're actually going to drop the radius of the cylinder down as well. Because it's actually going to... Um, let's just drag it over here. It's actually going to sit in our window. So we've got to make sure that it's going to intersect our our walls here that's fine and then we're going to choose a height for it i think that's actually yeah from the middle so there we go it's in there lovely uh, i think we could do it with it being a bit thicker actually something like that maybe yeah that should be fine right now we don't just want one we want a have these at equal distances all along the opening of the window. So what we're going to do is we're going to clone it. So if we go to MoGraph, go to the cloner object. Now the, cl the cloner object is actually created at 0, 0, 0 in the world space, but that just makes things awkward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a child of the cylinder. Click on it, go to coordinates and then right click on these little arrows here and it zeroes it out to the position of its parent. So now you can see it's at the same position as that. And now we can drag the cloner out and then make the cylinder a child of the cloner. So if we go to the cloner object, we can say that we want, um, we want it to be a linear mode, which is correct. Um, it's actually cloning it in the y direction as you can see down here it says 50 and if I zoom that up you can see that it's actually making here's the count how many it's making so none one two three and it's making it in the y direction we want to zero this out and we actually want this to be in I believe the negative x direction no nope, it's positive x so we can have our bars this far apart, which will be 77 centimeters, and then we can up the count of our clones. Uh, let's just play around with this value so it looks a bit more evenly spaced. And that's fine. We'll whack the wall texture on the clones for now. That's absolutely fine. Um, so basically what we've got is 
this scene. What I might do is actually set up a camera here. So let's get grab a camera. And now when I move around outside of the scene, if I ever want to go back to that view, I can just click on this camera object and push, we're back. Okay, so that makes it a little bit more handy. Um, right, we're going to need some lighting. So I think for this I'm going to use the, day, uh, the physical sky. So we can go up to this. Uh, this contains a load of environment objects. So select physical sky. That dumps a physical sky in our scene. I'm just going to drag this out. And this basically demonstrates, uh, just turn it off so we can see it, but I oh, can't do that. This is the sun and it's pointing at this target object here. And if we look in the sky, we can actually see that there's a bright patch there, which is the sun. So we want this to be the other way around really. So we can actually grab the system and spin it around 180 degrees. And then we should be shining inside this room. So if we go back to our camera and then render. Right. And you can see what the backlight shade is doing. Uh, I can demonstrate this by turning off the luminance channel. So now this is just a flat color. Now if I render this, the back side of this curtain is completely in shadow and there's no transmission of light through it. But with the luminance channel turned on with this backlight shader in, you can see that it's not only transmitted, well, it appears to have transmitted light through it, it's also taken the shadow of the bars that are in between the light and the curtain, and you can see it from the back face of the curtain. So that's working great. That's exactly what we want. We could also sell the illusion of this curtain being a lot thinner than it actually is by adding some transparency. So if I go into the curtain material and enable transparency, obviously 100% is way too much. And we could bring that down to maybe 15%, something like that. That might help sell it a little bit more. Maybe whack that value up a little bit to maybe 30%. And you can actually see through it now, so it looks kind of more like a neck curtain or something of that effect. Um, so we could add a floor to outside to sell this a little bit better, but I'm not too bothered. I, I think that I've demonstrated what the backlight shader does and how effective it can be. Um, can actually animate this curtain. In fact, I think I might do that. So let's go to the curtain object and the cloth tab, the cloth tag even, and go to forces. Now what we can actually do here is add some wind so we've got wind strength there so if we put this at maybe 0.5 and then press play and see what see what we've got not much is happening there okay so let's maybe whack this up to one there we go and it's actually working in what direction the positive z so if anything we'd want this probably working in the negative z because wind would be coming in um but you know what we'll leave that up 0.5 in the negative Z and we'll blow to the right slightly as well and maybe kick the strength up a bit 0.5 maybe mm, no nope. uh, strength 2 ok that's really kicking up now just take this display mode to the shading mode Okay. Maybe that's a bit strong in that direction. So really, you just got to play with these settings. Hey, you'll also notice that it's intersecting the uh, the bars on the window, and that's because there's actually no um, collider tag on there. So if we uh, choose, go to that, go into, uh, so we right click on our cylinder, go to simulation tags and cloth collider. We can now see that it should be colliding with it. Or maybe not. Uh, that may need... Ah, that may need to go on the actual cloner object itself. Let's test if that does the job. Yes, it did. It needed to go on the cloner object. 
and you can also see that the curtain's actually folding through itself. Uh, so what we can do is go to the cloth tag um, on the curtain and we can go to the expert tab and then turn on self collision. Now when we hit play this is going to slow the simulation down somewhat. Um, so what we can do is go to this cache and calculate the cache and what that does is <clears throat> it basically uh, bakes the cloth data so you can play it back in real time in the viewport so we just wait for that to do its job quick what I may do to add some bounce light into the room is uh, turn on global illumination also so um, in fact what I might do is cancel this cloth tag and this 30 seconds is way too long let's make it 10 now calculate the cache should be a lot quicker we don't need more than 10 seconds this is um, you know we're showing off the backlight shader here really I just thought it'd be nice to get some movement in the cloth um, actually if we whip it up quick enough we can get a bit of motion blur maybe on a physical camera okay so let's just see what this looks like okay yeah that's running a lot quicker now okay so let's have a look at this then so kind of you'll notice the uh, ceiling is very dark and that's because it's completely in shadow I should imagine um, so why don't we remedy that go to our render settings which is this button up here go down to effect add GI now, I'm not going to change anything here I'm just going to see what my results like first you can see it uh, pre-baking the cache <clears throat> just calculating all those ray bounces or approximating them just realized that I'm rendering out a ridiculous uh, a 1080 so let's go to our output lock the ratio and drop this down to something like 800 something a bit, bit more manageable and it will render a lot quicker for us and now we can there we go there we go so now the ceilings actually being illuminated because um, it, uh, it's got some bounce light going on in there so that's the backlight shader and uh, you can see how this would be useful for um, this kind of thing like a net curtain or maybe leaves on a tree uh, paper tissue paper anything like that that needs light transmitted through it thanks for watching bye <laughs>